The food we eat travels farther and is controlled by a smaller number of companies than ever before. Globalization of the food supply has increased greenhouse gas emissions and pollution. We figure a third of greenhouse gas emissions are from the production of food. And that's mostly in the transportation, the storage, the packaging, and the processing of that food. The farther food travels, the more freshness declines and nutrients are lost. Chemical preservatives are now common ingredients. Eating more foods grown and produced closer to where we live is seen by some as a way to reverse the negative effects of modern agriculture. It makes a lot more sense for you to be buying garlic from a, a garlic producer just outside of Kingston than from China. Could eating local make a difference to the health of the planet, our communities and ourselves? Fruits and vegetables would be fresher, local farmers would benefit, and we could reduce our carbon footprint. By eating local, you're helping the environment reduce the carbon footsteps because you can go to your next door neighbor, you can go to the farmer's market. Could it be that simple? Is a diet of local food a viable option in eastern Ontario, especially during the winter months? What exactly does eating local mean? So maybe you have to spend your Saturday afternoon and drop around and see a couple of different friends and neighbours in the communities to get all the things that you need to do that are sourced locally. Think about all the foods you'd have to give up because they can't be grown in our climate. No coffee, no tea, no bananas or olive oil, no salt and pepper, no chocolate. You probably couldn't shop at your favourite grocery store anymore. It forces you to be more creative and forces you to think about the food more than you otherwise would if everything was available to you. Could you prepare even one meal using strictly local ingredients? How about three meals a day for one week? Are you ready for the Eat Local Challenge? One week. Here's the week of food adventures. Only foods grown and produced close to home. They're like little hands. Hello. It's like Play-Doh. They're just creative. That's the beauty, eh? Are you ready for the Eat Local Challenge? In Brockville, Ontario, the Cameron Shea family, Andrea, Mike and Kieran, are challenging themselves to a strict seven-day diet made up of only foods produced and grown close to their home. My husband and I have been more conscious of where we're getting our food. We certainly haven't been extreme about it. Uh, I'd say maybe it's about half of our food is locally grown. I think this provides us with an opportunity to explore it further. Do you want to try peeling some of Peter Bunny's carrot? Healthier food choices have become more important to Andrea and Mike since their three-year-old son Kieran was born. Since my son was just a few days old, he's had various neurological problems, mostly to do with uh, seizures and some uh, right side weakness. He got to a point where he was very sick, just before he turned one, and we always thought we ate well and, and had a fairly nutritious diet. But then we started to look at, at foods that actually can um, be harmful to some people. That's your pancake flour, buckwheat flour. Do you want to put that in the cupboard? Gluten seemed to be one of the things that, if you remove it from a child who has any sort of neurological problems, uh, sometimes it can help. And we removed gluten and we found uh, that our very sick son, in many ways, started to become well. Will the family be able to succeed at this challenge without compromising the special diet that has improved Kieran's health? I got a smart car. It's not smart. It's kind of like American beer. You can't get ahead on it. <laughs> I go over to Wolf Island and drive by the Wolf Island turbines, the smart car gets sucked up. <laughs> see, on the south shore of Amherst Island, we can see the Wolf Island turbines, and on the north shore, we can see the generating station. It's country living, eh, at that point. <laughs> Over on Amherst Island, a small community near Kingston, accessible only by ferry, comedian and author Deborah Kimmett prepares for her seven-day Eat Local Challenge. I certainly believe in it from an environmental and also from an economical point of view of supporting local farmers. But I thought it's easy to talk about it, and I do, in my comedy show, I do a lot of jokes about it. But I thought, well, I'd like to put my money where my mouth is kind of thing and just try it. They're like little hands. Hello! They're good, we can have those, eat those. It's October, right? So it's a great time of year to be eating out of the garden. 
I have a lot of local people giving me food in the community, which is great. Over in Belleville, the staff at Engine Communications, an advertising and marketing company, prepare for their seven-day Eat Local Challenge. We talk food here a lot, so I thought this would be a fun opportunity for all of us to take something that we love anyways and to kind of team build, to just do something different. It would be interesting to see how much you could actually eat local and how much you mm -hmm. could you know, get you know, truly 100% local. Um, in this area. I know it's going to take a lot of time to source all the food, to find the stuff that I want to eat. I'm just worried that I'm not going to be able to find everything and how much time it's going to take to get it. I think maybe it'll be like sort of like a, a detox for us maybe next week, just a little bit because we'll be eating less processed foods. Mm -hmm. Like even, even cereal. Who knows what they do to cereal, right? We just <laughs> open that box in the morning, put it in the bowl and eat it. I'm not as aware of the agricultural community probably as I should be, and really that's often the foundation of any small community like ours. I much prefer to keep and spend the money in our local area and do what I can to decrease our carbon footprint. The Engine Communications team are coming to terms with what they are going to have to give up for their Eat Local Challenge. One of the biggest challenges is coffee. I know I'm not the only one here. We drink, <laughs> drink at least three cups a day, so. Chocolate milk. I really love chocolate milk. I have a big glass of chocolate milk before I go to bed every day. Um, but. <laughs> I'm a snacker. I just kind of eat all day long. And often I just unwrap a granola bar or pop open a yogurt, and that's my snack. Back in Brockville, Andrea and Kieran await the arrival of Wendy's Mobile Market a door-to-door -door delivery service specializing in local food products. In his refrigerated truck, Rick Trudeau delivers a wide range okay. of local food products to Hi. Brockville homes and restaurants. Some of my recipes that I most commonly make, the ingredients that I need aren't all local. So I start to realize how much actually we use that we can't get within 100 miles. It makes me think creatively of how I can replace those things, but it also makes me appreciate them more because it reminds me that for instance, olives. There's no olive grove near here. <laughs> Pick this morning. This is goat's milk. It comes from a goat. Ground beef. That's black Angus. That's from our farm. A watermelon. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm a party. Sweet corn is from our farm. The Swiss chard is from Picton. Buckwheat flour. Buckwheat flour from Picton. The kale's from Battersea. The leeks are from Battersea. I don't think we'll starve. We'll be able to find something to eat. I think it might take the whole week to eat the watermelon. <laughs> Back on Amherst Island, comedian Deborah Kimmett begins her search for local food a few kilometers down the road at Topsy Farms. Ian Murray and Sally Bowen are part of this family-owned farm specializing in wool and lamb meat. Unable to eat solid food due to an environmental illness, Sally eats her meals through a tube. Nonetheless, she grows a bounty of natural food in her garden. When I was losing my capacity to eat, I was told by a nutritionist that if I could only eat about two or three things, this should be one of them. These are called what, Sally? Jerusalem artichokes. You have to one. dig to Jerusalem to get it. <laughs> You're right. Is that one of them? That's one. There's probably 40 down there. 40? Yeah. They don't really look like artichokes at all. Do no, they? I know. It's a. Uh, it's more like a ginger. It's. It's like. It's like a nut. <laughs> so it's muddy. You. Did I tell you that I'm eating mud today? <laughs> kind of again getting back to my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Now I take the plant. Yeah. Take the whole plant. Cut the mud off. Watch your hands. It's kind of dirty, but, you know, actually dirt adds some more grain, I think, because I'm not getting any grain this week. <laughs> There'll be no oats or millet. Nothing that mayonnaise wouldn't make better, though, I have to say. I know 100% seems huge, but even if I make a 20% change at the end of this week, uh, you know, and I'll probably have more information. Yeah, kitty, kitty, no, that's chicky, chicky, come on, chicky. Ah. Okay, I've had enough of you. Do you mind? Can I just take a couple? I actually remember chickens attacking me, but I think I, that was a little child. They just look like they were attacking. Such hard work goes into food, and the more we get disconnected from it, we start to think it's just supposed to be accessible at all times. And when you actually went out and talked to Ian and Sally, today, it, you realize there's a lot of work involved 
and making the connection between what you get out of the refrigerator and what you see on a farm. It's been making me very aware of what food is available, how I could be sustainable, how I can think ahead and uh, just have the food that I need to live around. Coming up on Eat Local Challenge on TV Kojiko, team spirit is high at Engine Communications as the staff tackle day two with a local food potluck. It took so long. I got to my soup at like 11, 30, 12 o'clock last night. Plus, Deborah Kimmick gets the buzz on how to satisfy her sweet tooth. Now those bees coming home with me or fried bees? Mm. 